Well guys, I'm coming at you all with yet another crazy sun and moon theory. Before I get into this though, I want to clarify this theory is certainly not confirmed. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure if I entirely believe in every single point of it myself since there are parts of it that are a bit of a stretch. The main purpose of this video is to bring some facts to light and to get us to think a little here because there are quite a few inconsistencies that I've been noticing with regards to Sun and Moon and this theory does explain a lot of those inconsistencies pretty well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is while this theory is certainly plausible, take what I say in the next few minutes with a grain of salt. To start things off, I want to begin with a discussion of trademarks. For those of you who aren't aware, Sun and Moon were actually discovered a few days before the official announcement was made because of a trademark filed by Game Freak and Nintendo. Also, a few weeks before the starters and legendaries were officially revealed, we discover the names of 6 Pokemon in the trademark database. These Pokemon are Solgaleo, Lunala, Ashimari, Nyabi, Mokuro, and finally Marshadow. Solgaleo and Lunala are of course the names of the Sun and Moon legendaries, while Ashimaru, Niyabi, and Mokuro are the Japanese names for the starters. What this means is we actually already knew about the starters and the legendaries a few weeks before they were revealed. The reason why this is significant is it proves that the trademark database is a very trustable source of leaks, so it's very likely that Marshadow is also a Pokemon in Sun and Moon. Given that at the time Game Freak was only filing trademarks for starters and legendaries, I'd say it's a fair bet that Marshadow is the third member of the legendary trio for Sun and Moon, along with Solgaleo and Lunala. There is also speculation that Marshadow is an Eclipse Pokemon, which is pretty likely given the presence of the word Shadow in its name. For those of you who want to learn more about these trademark leaks, I'm going to include links in the description to a few videos talking about the issue more in depth since I don't have time to elaborate in this video. Anyways, back to the topic at hand, I'm sure you guys can see where I'm going with this point. I think there's going to be a Pokemon Eclipse version coming out in the future. But before we can get directly into this, there's something else in the mix we absolutely have to consider here, and that is Zygarde. Ever since X and Y came out, Zygarde has been a rather pointless Pokemon. Its stats quite frankly suck for a legendary, and it's the only member of a primary legendary trio not to be featured in an exclusive game as you have with Rayquaza and Emerald, Giratina and Platinum, and so on. The conundrum only got stranger when Game Freak released extra forms for Zygarde last year, but instead of announcing Pokemon Z, they announced Pokemon Sun and Moon. Recently, however, a trailer was released showing gameplay that proves Zygarde will indeed be in Sun and Moon and is involved in the games in some way since Game Freak dedicated an entire trailer to just this Pokemon. What if Zygarde's involvement in Sun and Moon is beyond a simple side attraction? Many people are thinking we're just going to get some items to change Zygarde's form in Sun and Moon, but I personally think it's more likely that Zygarde is directly involved in these games and plays some sort of significant role in them. One of the main reasons why I say this is that Zygarde actually fits in pretty well with the theme of Sun and Moon. It's both a ground type and a protector of the ecosystem which just scream Earth Pokemon to me. Now besides an Eclipse Legendary, the second most popular idea for a third member of the Sun and Moon Legendary Trio is a Pokemon that embodies the Earth. It would be very fitting to have a Sun Pokemon in Solgaleo, a Moon Pokemon in Lunala, and an Earth Pokemon of some sort such as for example Zygarde. So then, which one is it? Is the third member of the Sun and Moon Legendary Trio Marshadow or Zygarde? Well, here's my question. Why not both of them? What if there isn't a Legendary Trio for Sun and Moon, but rather a Legendary Quartet? That is, a grouping of four major legendaries as opposed to three, with the four major legendaries being Solgaleo the Sun Pokemon, Lunala the Moon Pokemon, Marshadow the Eclipse Pokemon, and Zygarde the Earth Pokemon. The biggest argument against this idea is that Zygarde is already a part of Legendary Trio with Xerneas and Eveltal, but I don't think this necessarily disproves anything. We already suspect there's some sort of relationship between Alola and Kalos given the strange souvenir from X and Y. It's also been confirmed that the protagonist of Sun and Moon is not from Alola, and many suspect that the protagonist is actually from Kalos, which would be yet another connection between the two games. And if Alola and Kalos are connected, then it would make sense for Zygarde to play a significant role in both of the legendary groupings from X and Y and Sun and Moon. So to sum things up here, the first part of my theory is that there will be a legendary foursome in Sun and Moon whose members will be Solgaleo, Lunala, Marshadow, and Zygarde. 
But let's actually extend this idea a little further. Now, in Gens 3 through 5, the third member of the primary legendary trio was featured in its own standalone game. In Gen 3, we had Rayquaza featured in Emerald version. In Gen 4, we had Giratina featured in Platinum version. And in Gen 5, we actually had Kyurem featured in two follow-up games with Black and White 2. As most of you probably recall, these games were direct sequels to Black and White and sold incredibly well. The games completely outsold Crystal, Emerald, and Platinum, meaning the only third follow-up game in the Pokemon main series that has done better than Black and White 2 is Yellow version. And the only reason why Yellow version outsold it is because Generation 1 was the first generation and a lot of people buy the Gen 1 games. What this points to is that it's highly likely Game Freak will repeat this and release two follow-up or sequel games for future Pokemon games. High sales not only mean more money, but also indicates that the game was a greater success than previous games, so if Game Freak takes a look at previous sales patterns, it will immediately become evident to them that releasing two sequel games as opposed to one is the right way to go about things. Moreover, if Zygarde and Marshadow are indeed going to play major roles in Sun and Moon, it doesn't make any sense to feature just one of them in a follow-up game and leave the other one out. Instead, it makes a lot more sense for Sun and Moon to have two follow-up or sequel games, as was the case with Black and White 2. But instead of calling the sequel Sun and Moon version 2, as was the case in Generation 5, I think they're going to be called something different. My theory is that in 2017, Game Freak is going to release Pokemon Earth and Pokemon Eclipse version, which will be sequels to Sun and Moon in the exact same manner that Black and White 2 were. Earth version will of course feature Zygarde, while Eclipse version will feature Marshadow. Given all the evidence for both Zygarde and Marshadow, as well as the success of Black and White 2, the idea of a Pokemon Earth and Eclipse version seems very plausible to me. If you think about it, Game Freak suddenly announcing Sun and Moon was very unexpected and left us with a ton of questions, but this theory answers a lot of those questions. Which is why I really do think there's a good chance Pokemon Earth and Eclipse version will pan out. Now, at the same time, I acknowledge that there's a lot against this theory as well. It could just as well be the case that Zygarde isn't going to be featured in a future Pokemon game and has been thrown to the wayside for no real good reason. Or maybe a Pokemon Z will be released in the future and my assumptions regarding that were off base. The point is, I'm not trying to draw any definite conclusions with this theory. Ultimately, we won't know the truth about Zygarde's role in Sun and Moon for certain until November 18th, the day games finally hit stores. So until then, we'll all just have to wait and see.